the war in Ukraine, in some respects, has dispelled a whole series of liberal illusions that uh, misled many people during the post-Cold War period. The idea that a uh, major war was almost sort of burned out of Europe, uh, that it was never going to happen there, that some combination of the European Union, NATO enlargement, the spread of markets, economic interdependence was going to make this uh, a zone of a vast zone of peace. And I think what the European countries have now discovered is that, you know, that it would have been nice if it had turned out that way, but it didn't and that hard power still matters in, in world politics. That one can't uh, simply let defense capabilities atrophy for several decades uh, and expect you'll never need them. Uh, that if you become highly dependent economically uh, on one country, that can be a problem if the relationship with that country deteriorates. The second wake up call here is that, you know, we're being reminded that powerful countries often do pretty horrible things when they feel, rightly or wrongly, that their security is being endangered. The United Nations and other institutions cannot prevent and a great power from doing something stupid, uh, often uh, cruel, uh, when they feel their circumstances require it. Um, and, you know, we ought to have known that. This is not the first time in the post-Cold War period that a major power has invaded a sovereign country on the basis of a series of illusions. The United States invaded Iraq in 2003 on the basis of a series of illusions. We did it uh, without uh, pr approval of the UN Security Council. Uh, it was every bit as illegal as what uh, Russia is now doing. And it's worth remembering, of course, that that didn't turn out particularly well for us uh, either. Vladimir Putin in the fullness of time may learn some of the same lessons we learned. Now, having said that, uh, the response to what's going on in Europe is in some respects gratifying and the response of the Western Europeans, our NATO allies, I think has surprised many people. They were able to sustain a, a fairly complacent attitude for a long time because they were confident that at the end of the day, the United States would always bail them out and come in and protect them. And the speed with which Europe has adjusted its thinking there is really quite striking. And I believe Europeans also understand that over time, the United States is going to want to focus a lot more attention on Asia, that when this crisis is over, China will still be there. And moreover, one of the implications of this crisis has may be to essentially put China and Russia closer together to draw a sharper distinction between autocratic regimes and uh, the world's democracies, and that therefore that's going to require the United States to do more in Asia. There's been in the first you know, week or so, a certain degree of premature triumphalism when we saw that the Russian army was having more difficulties than uh, Vladimir Putin probably expected. There was this immediate tendency to say, well, you know, Putin has already lost, etc. I think that's uh, that's quite premature. And moreover, the assumption that defeat of Russia is going to require regime change there is both A, premature and B, quite possibly dangerous. And there have been people who should know better in the West saying things like that. You do not want to back a nuclear power into a corner where they feel their survival is at stake. And that means the diplomatic challenge uh, that we're facing going forward is a very, very tricky one. This war will not end until the various parties involved come to understand that they're not going to be able to achieve their objectives and they start looking for a bargain where they each get at least some of what they think they want while recognizing they can't get all of what they want. And I don't think we're there yet. So I am hoping that people inside uh, the various governments are starting to think creatively about how this gets resolved because the longer it goes on the more damage gets done and the more there is a risk that this begins to spread and spin out of control war has its own logic has its own uh, dynamic to it and countries that get in them often find themselves in a month in six months in a year in circumstances that are very different than what they expected and something they would never have gone into voluntarily had they known where it was going to lead.